Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Connor James. We begin tonight with a story of overcoming addiction. For one man in Pike County, this last month has been one of the best of his life. He's celebrating nearly two years clean. I talked with him today about his journey. As evening falls over this little trailer park in Pike County, this is an egg. Six-year-old Kiara shows off it's in a hat. the spider nests behind her house. Yeah. Her brother, seven-year-old Patrick Jr., sits on the steps showing off his gaming skills. Love you. Love you, punk. Their dad, Patrick Gerald. She's not bashful, are you? Just smiles uh -huh. as he has another night with his family. But things weren't always this way. I liked it. You know, the feeling it gave me. But I didn't know the cost that would come with it. For nearly half his life, Patrick struggled with a serious drug addiction. He and his first wife, both. The two were married for six years. They had a daughter. And we struggled. And in 2009, I had woke up and uh, found her dead. Patrick lost his wife, Shonda, to an overdose. Then only eight months later... I found my dad uh, of an overdose. You know, you hear stories of people overdosing, but... You think, well, we know our limit and never happened to us, but there's always that, that one time. It, you know, one pill could be your last one. In less than one year, Patrick lost both his wife and his father. He remarried, and that's when Patrick and Kiara were born. Uh, we ended up losing our two kids. Uh, was homeless, living in a tent. After 16 years hooked on drugs and a life of loss, Patrick felt hopeless. I didn't think that I'd ever have the chance or have the support that I needed to make that change. But that wasn't the case. The chance came in 2017 when Patrick started on the road to recovery. The first couple months is rough. Patrick uh, goes on to say the months life. after were just as hard, adjusting to a new life, a new him, but every minute of it was worth it. We got him back a month ago. Yeah. A judge recently granted him guardianship of Patrick and Kiara. I'm not going to change anything losing my kids again. So I don't care what I have to do to make it. He has a family again. I'm, I'm a dad, and I actually, I feel like a dad. The spiders, yeah, you can. Now, you know, my, I'm not calling my kids on the phone, trying to hug them or kiss them over the telephone. I can look at them, I can hold them, touch them. What is it you play on there? And it's, it's just great. Subway, Subway surfers. surfers. You know, I don't want to, I hate sending them to school. You know, it's, I love my kids, and cool. <laughs> they, they make my life worth living, you know. Now, Patrick says this was all possible because of Sparrow Health, a local outpatient care for people with opioid use disorder. We have information about them on our website, WYMT.com. Well, the state's new education accountability system has been out for almost 24 hours. And while there are many bright spots in our region, officials found serious issues in an eastern Kentucky district. Duff Allen Central Elementary in Floyd County was classified as Comprehensive Support and Improvement, or CSI, meaning it ranked in the bottom 5% of all schools in Kentucky. It was one of three schools that received a one out of five star rating in the county. The other two being Floyd Central High School and James D. Adam Middle School. Superintendent Danny Adkins says the district is well aware of the results and they are working hard to get back on track. In a statement, Adkins says in part, quote, we will grow and get better for our students, period. And this data helps us see areas where we may need to put more focus on, quote, we have that full statement, which includes the district's plan for improvement on our website. On the other end of the spectrum is the Jackson City School. While the school may be small, their ACT scores rank in the top of the state. This journey has been long for the tight senior class, but this shows that small town and small school Kentucky have a lot to offer. I've been with most of my classmates since preschool. We've, we've really grown up together. I see a lot of these teachers and staff as my family. I talk to them outside of school. They give me advice on everything far outside of school and Jackson City is. You can find a full list of school rankings on our website WYMT.com. Well, a Central Kentucky high school student is facing serious charges after being accused of sexually assaulting a 13-year-old girl on a school bus. The incident happened Friday afternoon in Lincoln County. 
Police say 18-year-old Matthew Boswell repeatedly grabbed the girl inappropriately while she resisted. He was arrested yesterday after police watched surveillance video from the bus. Boswell is also facing charges for a violent bullying incident two weeks earlier. He remains in the Lincoln County Regional Jail. Well, three people were arrested on drug charges in Laurel County after deputies say they found an illegal burn. Now, it all happened off Morintown Road this morning. Deputies say they were investigating the illegal burn at the time. When they arrived, they found these three people, Charles Sizemore, Jody Noland, and Kathy Delph with pills, meth, and other drugs. All three were taken to the Laurel County Detention Center. Well, today is the first official day of the fall forest fire season. That means there are burn restrictions from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. With most eastern Kentucky counties already on a burn ban and officials from the Kentucky Division of Forest expects this forest fire season to be a busy one. We're only looking forward to get drier and busier as we start to see the leaves come off and uh, more sunlight getting to the ground and really drying out those fuels. Officials say there were 41 fires in the month of September, which is higher than usual. They say it is important to follow all burn bans because in these conditions, one flame could lead to a dangerous fire. And we saw more record-breaking temperatures for the first day of October. Yes, it is October, not August. Reached a high of 97 at Jackson, 93 in London. And this not only broke the daily record, this broke the monthly record. So both records, the hottest temperatures on record in the month of October. Crazy. We only reached a high of 89 October 8, 2007. Haven't even reached a high of 90 in the month of October at Jackson. Definitely broke that record today. Still seeing those upper 60s, lower 70s looking down into the Cumberland Valley. Still 80 if we're looking into Jackson and Pikeville. 78 into Prestonsburg. Of course, we remain on the drier side once again today as high pressure really dominated our area, which allowed us to add another day to this tr dry trend. 34 Four days now without rain at the National Weather Service in Jackson. If you remember, we broke that record of 25. That was set back to 2005 and 1991. So the heat continues for a couple more days, but cooler temperatures are on the way and a cold front looks to arrive and maybe bring us a few more of those rain chances. I'll have that and more coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, thank you, Paige. Well, a proposed bill could add Kentucky to the long list of states that would no longer allow drivers to hold any electronic device while driving. The focus being cell phones. New at 11, Nick Oliver explains why some say this is a change the bluegrass state needs. In a world already full of distractions, the distractions that happen behind the wheel are some of the most dangerous. And just days after Jerry Elder, a truck driver from Michigan, killed one man while watching a video on his cell phone on I-64 in Frankfurt, two Kentucky lawmakers have pre-filed a bill they hope will solve the problem with hands-free driving. The pre-filed bill by James Tipton and Steve Sheldon would ban drivers from using mobile phones, tablets, computers, and other communication devices while driving. Um, we live in a distracted society. Lori Hawkins with AAA says possible new laws like this is something they watch closely. And with nine people dying every day because of distracted driving across the U.S., they hope something like this in a world surrounded by phones can give some peace. Two seconds of distraction can actually double your chances of a crash. 20 other states already have hands-free laws. And while experts say this could be a good start for Kentucky, they say that start needs to happen a little bit earlier. Passing laws that um, try to curb these behaviors is part of the answer, but also public education, educating uh, people from the time that they're children. In Lexington, Nick Oliver for the Fox 56 10 o'clock news. First offense violators could be fined up to $100. Lawmakers also pointed to Georgia where they reported a decrease in traffic deaths after this law was passed. Well, the $3.7 million grant allowing laid off miners to go to school for free. The Department of Labor gave this grant to EKSEP to help miners get back on their feet. Black Jewel miners have been taking advantage of this offer. More than 450 have enrolled and 100 have already started training. EKSEP Director Jeff White had said miners are not always aware of their services and it can be hard to get in contact. But this time, that was not the case. In that process of pulling miners together in community, uh, we tapped into that. And so we were able to be at the table 
when they were receiving some of the help that they got uh, and connected with them there. EKSEP tries to get miners in expedited training, so in just a few months, they're ready for the workforce. Well, a Work Ready Training Center is coming to Barberville to help give people certifications for skilled technical jobs. EKSEP and KCEOC and Southeast Community and Technical College have partnered in to transform the former Barberville Nursing Home into the Barberville Work Ready Training Center to certify for jobs like welding, medical coding, and fiber optics. We don't want them learning stuff here and going off somewhere else. This would be hometown trained and be able to work here in a high-tech business and the businesses will set up here. The training center is scheduled to open for classes next fall. Well, students at Mullen School in Pike County are heading into a new month with a new mission to celebrate National Bowling Prevention Month. The Mullen's gifted and talented program created signs to encourage their peers. The signs contain pos positive messages as part of the students' work to create a more positive culture for the entire school. We want them everywhere. It, you, little kids go through a hard time as well as the big kids. Bullying is a big thing in today's society. Those involved say the posters have already been receiving attention from students. Well, take a look at this. This is a photo of a Kentucky State Trooper holding a baby at a restaurant. Now, why? Because he noticed a new mom struggling with the crying baby. So he offered to hold the baby while she ate. Trooper Aaron Hapton works at Kentucky State Police Post 3, but is originally from Harlan. Now, check out this video. Justin Pratter caught with a trail cam in Pike County. There you can see a bear in the daylight eating some corn he put out. Later that night, <laughs> that's scary. Later that night, the bear returns after struggling while with struggling a while with the camera. The bear finally gets it down to the ground and tries to snack on it. Eventually, it figured out that it was not food and went on. Justin said he thought someone tried to steal the camera until he went back to watch the footage. The Pike County Animal Shelter is pushing its efforts to find forever homes for animals in its custody. Today, the shelter hosted a pet fair at Rural King to help showcase some of its available animals. The event offered $5 adoptions to people interested and brought in dogs, cats, and kittens to create a variety of pets to choose from. Animal Control Officer Daryl Mullen says the shelter hosts similar pet fairs around the community every month, bringing the animals to the people. When they're at a rural king or pet go or somewhere shopping around, they see an animal. A lot of times we can get them home. For more information on adoptions, visit the shelter's Facebook page. Stay with us. We'll be right back.